The Constituent Assembly of India was elected to frame the Constitution of India elected by the Provincial Assembly. Following India's independence from British government in 1947, its members served as the nation's first parliament. Of the 389 members of the Indian Constituent Assembly, 15 were women. Hello and Namaste, I am Racha Devedi and this is NIJ Edit. As the nation celebrates Nari Shakti on this International Women's Day, we will look at the remarkable contributions of 15 women of the Indian Constituent Assembly. Amu Swaminathan belonged to an upper caste Hindu family in Anakara of Palghat district, Kerala. She formed the Women's India Association in 1917 in Madras along with Annie Besant, Margaret Cousins, Malati Patwardhan, Dada Bhoy and Ambu Jamal. She became a part of the Constituent Assembly from the Madras constituency in 1946. Dakshayani Velayudhan Born in 1912 in Mulavukad, a small island off the coast of Kochi, Velayudhan's life and politics was influenced and defined by the rigid caste system in Kerala. She belonged to the Pulaya community. She was encouraged to pursue higher education and has the distinction of being the first woman scheduled caste graduate. Velayudhan was elected to the Constituent Assembly from the Madras constituency. At the age of 34, she was one of the youngest and the only Dalit woman member of the Constituent Assembly. She made key interventions on issues of untouchability, forced labour, reservations and separate electorates for Dalits. Begum Ezaz Rasool Begum Ezaz Rasool was born in Malarkotla into a princely family and was married to the young land owner Nawab Ezaz Rasool. She was the only Muslim woman member of the Constituent Assembly. With the enactment of the Government of India Act 1935, Begum and her husband joined the Muslim League and entered electoral politics. In the 1937 election, she was elected to the UP Legislative Assembly. This is when she also formally gave up the Parda. She was a strong opponent of reservation for minorities in legislative assemblies, the partition of India and feudal practices like the Zamindari system. She also significantly contributed to popularizing women's hockey. In the assembly, she intervened in the debates on national language, India remaining a part of the Commonwealth, reservation, property rights and minority rights. Durga Bai Deshmukh A staunch follower of Mahatma Gandhi, Durga Bai Deshmukh became the mother of social work. She participated in the Salt Satyagraha movement in Madras, following which she was jailed in 1930 for around three years. During her jail time, she was exposed to the plight of illiterate women who were incarcerated for crimes they did not commit. She took up criminal law later and went on to take up numerous initiatives dedicated to the cause of women empowerment through education. She also started an adult literacy program for widowed, deserted or destitute women, helping them obtain their higher school degree. As a consequence of such initiatives, she founded the now famous Andhra Mahila Sabha, a voluntary organization for women that works across various fields including health, disability, rehabilitation, legal aid and old age support among others. Taking note of her extensive work in social service, she was inducted into the Constituent Assembly in 1946. As a member of the steering committee, she actively participated in constituent assembly debates, fiercely defending property rights for women under the Hindu Code Bill, independence of the judiciary and for lowering the age bar for those seeking to hold seats in the subsequent Council of States from 35 to 30. Hansraj Jeevraj Mehta Hansraj Jeevraj Mehta served on the Constituent Assembly and was a member of the Fundamental Rights Subcommittee, the Advisory Committee and the Provincial Constitutional Committee. On 15th August 1947, a few minutes after midnight, Mehta on behalf of the Women of India presented the national flag to the Assembly, the first flag to fly over independent India. Kamla Chaudhary Kamla Chaudhary was a Hindi story writer. She actively participated in the civil disobedience movement of 1930. She was a member of the Constituent Assembly and after the constitution was adopted, she served as a member of the provincial government of India till 1952. Malati Chaudhary 
After independence, Malati Chaudhary as a member of the Constituent Assembly of India and as the president of the Utkal Pradesh Congress Committee, tried her best to emphasize the role of education, especially adult education in rural reconstruction. She also joined the Bhudan movement of Acharya Vinoba Bhave and was deeply influenced by both Tagore and Gandhi. Leela Roy a freedom fighter and social worker who worked for the education of women in India. Leela Roy was the only elected woman member from Bengal to the Assembly. She resigned from her post to stage a protest against the partition of India. She was a close associate of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. Purnima Banerjee Purnima Banerjee was one among a radical network of women from UP who stood at the forefront of the freedom movement in the late 1930s. She was the secretary of the Indian National Congress Committee in Allahabad. Banerjee was the younger sister of famous freedom fighter, educator and activist Aruna Asaf Ali. Rajkumari Amrit Kaur Amrit Kaur was elected to the Constituent Assembly from the United Provinces. Her most significant contribution was in ensuring extensive political participation of women. She became the first woman to hold a cabinet position in India as Health Minister. The All India Women's Conference Centre, the Lady Irwin College in Delhi and the All India Institute of Medical Sciences are few of the reputed organisations that owe their existence to her. Renuka Rai as part of the Constituent Assembly from West Bengal, she made several interventions in the Assembly including on women's rights issues, minority rights and bicameral legislature provision. She also joined the All India Women's Conference and campaigned hard for women's rights and inheritance rights in parental property. Sarojini Naidu Popularly known as the Nightangle of India, Sarojini Naidu was an exceptional poetess and a woman and civil rights activist. Naidu's poetry includes both children's poems and others written on more serious themes including patriotism, romance and tragedy. When she was elected to the Constituent Assembly from the state of Bihar, in her vision, the constitution was going to be an immortal charter of India's freedom which would restore India back to her rightful place as the torchbearer of liberty, love and peace. As a member of the Ad Hoc Committee on National Flag, she spoke at length in the Constituent Assembly about the importance and meaning of the national flag for India. She recounted how once during the International Conference in Berlin, she was anguished by the fact that India did not have a national flag. On her suggestion, the Indian women delegates cut two strips from their saris to make the tricolor flag so that the country isn't humiliated for the lack of a national banner. Immensely inspiring, isn't it? Sucheta Kriplani Sucheta Kriplani is remembered for her role in the Quit India movement of 1942. She established the women's wing of the Congress party in 1940. She sang Bande Mataram in the independence session of the Constituent Assembly. She was also India's first woman chief minister. Vijay Lakshmi Pandit as an activist, minister, ambassador and diplomat, she was among the few revolutionising the role of women in nation building. The first woman cabinet minister in the British era, Pandit, was one of the first leaders to call for an Indian constituent assembly to frame a constitution. Annie Mascarena Mascarena was one of the leaders of the movements for independence and integrity of the princely states within the Indian nation. When the political party Travancore State Congress was formed, she became one of the first women to join. She also served on the Constituent Assembly's select committee that looked into the Hindu Code Bill. The lives of these 15 women have provided inspiration to millions of Indians and continue to stir us in the direction of nation building even today. This is the Nari Shakti that India has been proud of, that India celebrates and cherishes. Do let us know in the comments below if you found this video insightful. Until next time, this is Richa Devedi signing off. Dhanavad and Namaste.